So what the earthly tabernacle also represents is the body of Messiah, us collectively as believers. And again, the call is to holiness. Put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long, uh, long for the spiritual, pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Yeshua HaMashiach. It stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Just always make the point of... Those who do not believe are those who do, uh, who do disobey because disobedience is unbelief. Obedience is belief. So we're built up into a spiritual house to offer spiritual sacrifices. And the cornerstone is Yeshua. Those who disobey the word find Yeshua to be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They do not believe that they might have life. They probably don't look like this on the inside, but yeah, on the outside, but Yehovah judges the heart. Now what I'm going to do is this, this is a demonstration of when you're actually putting the Torah portion together and you know you've got to continue, but you're mentally tired and you feel like you've just got to do something. It's not really that productive, but you just at least you're doing something. So I was putting it together and I come to this. They probably don't look like this on the outside, but Yehovah judges the heart. And then I'm like, probably look more like this. And I think because I'm just like tired and I'm trying to pretend I'm working. It just got silly and silly. Oh my word, that's just that's an insight to what goes on when I get tired. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him and call you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. So where have we seen this language before? In Exodus 19. If you will shema my voice indeed, again, if you will shema, keep my covenant, cherish my covenant, then you will be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine and you should be to me, and it's similar language that we read there, kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the children of Israel. Those who are built into Yehovah's house are those who shema. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which do what? Which defile our garments, which wage war against your soul. Why? Because we're to walk according to the Spirit. What does this Spirit do? It strengthens our spirit to do what? To walk in His ways. Bring in what? Bring in life and peace. As opposed to walk into the flesh, which we're told in Scripture just brings death. We are to submit to Yehovah's law, to Shema. It's interesting when I spoke recently to my brother, um, because he, he, he's he spent so long um, hating God and investigating like the idea that the God of the Old Testament is is horrible and evil, and but he's got a Christian notion of who Jesus is, and Jesus is good, but God is this old ogre from the Old Testament. But what is incredible to me when I actually study the scripture is the fact that the message is the same all the way through. There is no Old Testament, New Testament. It's all the same message all the way through. In Zechariah, we read that it is the branch who will build the house of Yehovah. Zechariah 6. Speak unto him, saying, Thus saith Yehovah Zavayot, saying, Behold, a man whose name is the branch. He shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yehovah. Even he shall build the temple of Yehovah and shall bear the glory and he shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be a priest upon his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of Yehovah and you shall know that Yehovah Zavayot hath sent me unto you and this shall come to pass if you diligently watch Shema the voice of Yehovah your God. Please note this expression, they that are far off. 
And then first we should ask ourselves, who is the branch? Isaiah 11. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow forth out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is the line from which we get David and the Messiah comes, by the way. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of Jehovah. This is all talking about the Messiah. Branch is Netzet, so think Nazareth. Nazareth means branch town, so named by David's descendants who were wondering who was going to be the one of promise. So in here we've actually got a prophecy that Yeshua would come from Nazareth. He came and he dwelt in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled that which was written by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Yeshua is the branch and he builds the house of Yehovah. And to do so, he brings in those who are far off. And we know those to be those of the house of Israel. And for those who don't know, there was 12 tribes in Israel. And in the south, there was um, two tribes. And they split from the 10 tribes in the north. And the kingdom in the south became the house of Judah. And the kingdom in the north became the house of Israel. And due to what the house of Israel did in the north, turning their backs on Jehovah and going after idols, they were scattered throughout the world. And the characteristics of the house of Israel is that they would live among the Gentiles, forget the name of their God, would know or understand the Lord of God. They'll call my people who are not my people. You'll see that throughout scripture. And they're also described as those that are far off. They're described as lost sheep. And also we read that most of them, the majority of them will come from the West when they are regathered. And if you look at the way prophecy pans out, you can see that around the year 2009 is the time when the Lord starts to gather his people. When they start to remember the name of their God, when they start to figure out and understand the Torah of God. Let's have a look at what happens. And the punishment is laid down in the book of Amos. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that lo, the day shall come upon you, that he will take, away, take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. So he will take you away with fish hooks. And then the Assyrians depopulated and exiled a conquered community. They led the captives away on journeys of hundreds of miles with the captives naked and attached together with a system of strings and fish hooks pierced through their lower lip. Yehovah would make sure that they were led in this humiliating manner through the broken walls of their conquered cities. But just as the house of Israel were led away like fish, so Yeshua calls those who are prepared to count the cost and follow him to be fishers of men. A call that ties in very well with his statement. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And here we read, Speak to him, saying, Thus speaks Jehovah Zavayot, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, Yeshua, he shall grow up out of this place, and he shall build the temple of Jehovah, which, as we've seen, is built of what? Living stones out of people. And they that are far off, who is this that it's talking about? The house of Israel shall come in and build the temple of Jehovah. We were once far off. Ephesians 2 says, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple unto the Lord, in whom you are also built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So we were once far off, we were once strangers, but what Yeshua did was to bring us in covenant with him. The house of Israel was scattered throughout the world. They were out of covenant and Yeshua made a way as he came to build the house of Yehovah. So thank you, Yeshua, the branch. We are joined together as the temple of Yehovah. We also see in scripture that as well as being described as being living stones built together for an habitation of God, a temple with Yeshua as the cornerstone, were also described as the body. Colossians 1.18 He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. And we read, Just as the body is one and as many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. 
For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. As it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honourable, we bestow the greater honour. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honour to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it. The old vow wants us to see that we all have need of one another. The eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you. The eye serves the hand and the hand serves the eye. We all have need of one another. We're not all called to serve in the same way, but we are all called to serve. You should recognise that you've been given the opportunity to be an integral part of what Jehovah is doing. You've been called to be a part of his body. Now, some people have a poor opinion of themselves. Rubbish me, rubbish. But what you're called to is incredible, however you think about yourself. But there are also folk with big impressions of themselves. <laughs> Full of self-importance, they esteem themselves very highly. But this is not good and is certainly not the example that Yeshua set. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. What a verse, just on its own. Wow. Let each of you look, not look to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Look not only to his own interests, rather. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Remember that in all things he is our example. Being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Yeshua every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Yeshua HaMashiach is Lord to the glory of God and the Father. The good Father. So, consider the example that he set. You're part of a body. You're part of this temple that's being built. 